Former Treasurer Peter Costello used to be the chairman of Channel 9, and Channel 9 owns most of the traditionally conservative commercial talk radio stations in Australia, but he presided over an executive that shifted those stations a little editorially away from the right, as it seemed to do with the Nine TV network's editorial stance also. This was more in line with the newspapers that they bought, the old Fairfax newspapers, the Melbourne Age and the Sydney Morning Herald, which have always been known as centre-left to left-leaning. And these nine media newspapers reporting on the ARC conference in Sydney this week was just awful. The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald have a gossip column called CBD Confidential, and it childishly carried out an unprovoked attack on ARC organiser Dr Jordan Peterson. The column reported that Peterson was supposed to appear live in person at the ARC Australia event in Sydney, but that he left it too late to get his visa and he had to fly back to Canada for a family emergency. But instead of being decent and reasonable and mature about this, the Age and Sydney Morning Herald gossip column mocked Dr Peterson, saying he couldn't attend his own conference and had to zoom in. They wrote that Peterson was best known in their superior educated opinion for apocalyptic ramblings about the death of Western civilization and life advice for teenage boys who just can't seem to get a girl. Wow, what a horrible thing to say. What a nasty and mean dig that is. Not only at Peterson, but more importantly at our teenage boys, or all men really especially those who are actually lonely or having trouble meeting women and have found some wisdom and solace in Peterson's writings. But that's what they do in the cool kid inner city media and academic cliques. They mock ordinary people and they wonder why nobody buys their newspapers or has any trust or respect for journalism in this country anymore because they're nasty and mean and unpleasant in the extreme. Jordan Peterson, of course, has faced a lot worse with left-wing media all over the world. I'm sure he doesn't give a rats about the Sydney Morning Herald or The Age. They all attack him with hit pieces. Peterson is enemy number one to leftist academics because he challenges them intelligently and on their own turf, and they can't stand that. They can't dismiss him as just another dumb deplorable, as they so enjoy doing to so many of us ordinary people. I mean, clearly Peterson has nothing to offer, right? No value to bring. Only 50 million people have watched the famous interview on the UK's Channel 4, where he stood up to the very kind of person that writes columns like those creeps at nine newspapers, the self-important presenter and interviewer, Cathy Newman. He showed up all her hubris and performative nonsense so badly that it broke the internet and shot Peterson to international fame. I mean, only 10 million people bought his book, 12 Rules for Life, only 8 million people subscribe to his YouTube channel. I was at ARC in Sydney this week and I saw the Peterson presentation on Zoom. It was far from rambling. It would only appear to be rambling to those of very low intellect, which I suppose explains the CBD column's view that it was rambling. They couldn't follow it, the poor darlings. There's nothing wrong with not being able to follow very clever academics when they speak, but it might be best to show a little humility and not call them ramblers just because you can't understand what they're saying. As for the quote, death of Western civilization that Peterson was talking about, or they're claiming he was talking about, that isn't a view held only by Jordan Peterson, but by countless of very established and respected social critics and commentators all over the world. And Peterson's goal is to prevent the death of Western civilization. And why are these creeps mocking teenage boys who just can't seem to get a girl? I guess it's okay to mock men and boys in the elitist bubble that these clowns live and work within. Is it any wonder that Peterson has defied the odds and become so popular? And still these arrogant clowns on the left don't get it. He's popular because he brings a message to young people and particularly young men that the world is not about to end in a climate catastrophe. He rejects the perpetual victim mindset that's fed to kids by woke teachers, educated in woke universities by woke academics. He speaks about personally empowering concepts like personal responsibility and taking action 
and building confidence and hard work and meeting life's challenges and unfairness and rising above them. The viewing of life as a wonderful adventure, an adventure that we have a responsibility to accept and embrace. Now, there isn't anything more exciting that young people can hear than that message, the equation between responsibility and adventure. I've talked literally to hundreds of thousands of people around the world in hundreds of forums of the sort that I'm addressing tonight. And every single time I talked about the relationship between responsibility and adventure, the entire audience went dead silent. It's a message that hasn't been promulgated effectively, not least by the conservatives and the classic liberals, for at least four decades. Nothing better than the call to responsibility. And we're seeing a shift among young men already across the West in that direction. Meaning that will sustain you through the trials and tribulations of life is to be found in the adopting of as much responsibility as you can bear. Wow, what a concept. It's the adult emerging, the true leader. And he's right. Kids have been getting the opposite message in our country and all over the Western world for way too long. Governments that want to control you will seek to infantilize you, make you like little children so you never grow up and you always need them to take care of you. He's also right that if Western civilization doesn't cut out that cultural cancer, the woke mind virus of fatalistic despair, it will die. Pity the children who write for the SMH and the age don't listen harder and try to actually understand what Peterson is saying. They might actually enjoy growing up and embracing as much responsibility for their own lives as they can bear. And that's a sacrificial gesture, by the way. That's the sacrifice of the narrow self, the narrow, hedonistic, immature, underdeveloped self to the self that extends over time into the future and that involves family and broader community. And that brings us from the better story to the issue of responsible citizenship. We're in a crisis of identity in the West, and that's because we took fractionated individual liberalism to its logical conclusion. People who attempt to find their redeeming identity in their own fragmented individuality will fail. We know that self-consciousness, for example, is associated with negative emotion and misery. Communal creatures like us who are deeply social find our purpose in the sacrifice of narrow self-interest to the future, to the people we love, to our families, to our broader community in a hierarchical relationship all the way up to the nation and beyond. Yeah, it's, it's horrible stuff, very dangerous and kooky ideas. He has that old Dr. Peterson, all that, all that personal responsibility and individual empowerment focused on the betterment of our families and communities and nations. Terrible, terrible ideas. Thank God we have the modern left and the developmentally challenged journalists at the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age to remind us all that we are doomed, oppressive victims every day. So good for our kids' sense of well-being and the cultural health of our society. Thank you, Nine Newspapers. Thank you. Did you know that for every two to three teachers in Australia working hard in classrooms across the country, there is one taxpayer-funded bureaucrat sitting behind a desk doing admin and making and enforcing rules and regulations that make those teachers' jobs even harder? That's right, one bureaucrat for every two to three frontline teachers. That's how bloated our public service has become. But you'll never hear about it from the regular teachers' unions because they also represent many of those public servants. So says the leading alternative teachers' union in Australia, the TPAA. If you're a teacher, it's time to change to a union that will not only look after you without using your money to support the Labor Party, but which is taking on the government education system to sidestep those bureaucrats and use the savings to pay all teachers 25% more. The current waste must stop. All the red tape doesn't just suck up resources and time, it actually takes the teachers away from teaching our kids and it wastes their time filling in crazy paperwork for meddling bureaucrats. So join the union that will actually stand up against big bloated government. Join the TPAA, the Teachers Professional Association of Australia. To find out more, just Google TPAA. 
The TPAA's fees are half the price because none of your money goes to any political party. And as an Other Side viewer, if you use our special code, Other Side one when you sign up, you'll get a further $100 off your first year's fees as a rebate on your first payments. Go to tpaa.redunion.com.au, tpaa.redunion.com.au to sign up now for a better union and support the Other Side too by supporting our sponsors. Thank you, teachers, you legends. If you like that clip, there's more where that came from in our full show, The Other Side. You can watch it right here, the latest episode. And please subscribe to our channel by pressing the subscribe button right here or down here. And remember to click that notification bell too. It all helps. Join us and become part of The Other Side.